sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, they will guide you into all the truth. For they will not speak on their own, but will speak whatever they hear, and they will declare to you the things that are to come. The Spirit will glorify me, because they will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I say that the Father will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Grace and peace be unto you from God, who is our creator, and from Jesus Christ, who is our savior and our friend. Amen. Several years ago, before Elijah, my two-year-old son, was placed with us, uh, Hans and I took a class called Positive Parenting. We had to do a lot of preparation in order to, uh, to have Elijah placed with us. So for five weeks in a row, on a Tuesday evening, we gathered with about 30 other parents for two hours to learn how to accomplish various parenting goals, and of course, in a positive way. So the style of the class was conversational. The teacher's preferred method was for us, the participants, to tell a story to the class that described the situation we were dealing with or the question that we had, and then she would respond and talk, 
And then we would all discuss and we would learn from that question and in that way. So although everyone in the class was invited to talk and to share about their lives, at no point were we asked to disclose our professions or our marital or relationship status or, of course, our religious beliefs. So if those things came up in the conversation, it's because we brought them up, but we weren't asked to do it. Okay, so during weeks one to three, we focused on goals and techniques, like how to get children to brush their teeth <laughs> and to go to bed <laughs> and then to get dressed in the morning and to sit at the table, you know, fairly neutral stuff. But in weeks four and five, we were discussing values, how to talk with children about difficult topics like sex and, did you hear me? Maybe I said it too quietly, but sex! and drugs and death and race and so obviously if you're a person of faith your faith is going to impact what you would say to your children about those things so during the very last session session number five i prefaced the story that i was about to tell and the question i was going to ask by saying Okay, so I'm the pastor of a Lutheran congregation, and we have a preschool, and I do chapel with the children, and I know the children well. And then I went on and asked my question, and we had the discussion. And after the class, the teacher came over to me, <laughs> and she smiled at me in that way. <laughs> and she said, so you waited until the last class <laughs> to tell us you were a pastor. <laughs> Was that intentional? <laughs> Well, actually, it wasn't intentional. It, it, I hadn't planned it out. I, I had not decided to wait until the last class to reveal that I was a pastor or my Christian faith. It just kind of happened that way. But in retrospect, it would have been better if I had come out as a pastor, as a Christian, sooner, maybe in class number three or four because I figure if I had told everyone in the class that I was a pastor in the very first class then that might have scared some people off from even like talking to me they'd be like oh my gosh she's one of those or they might have just immediately viewed me through their own stereotypes so give them a week or two to you know get to know us but if I had done it before the end and not at the very last class but like class three or four then people would have known more of my whole self, right? I mean, they would have known the whole me as much as you can. And then, of course, vice versa. And those who had questions about faith, well, they would have had a chance to come and talk to me about it. And a few people did, even after class number five, but there would have been more time for that. So live and learn, right? We're always learning. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Today is the day we remember that after Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, God sent the Holy Spirit to Jesus' how many followers, for those of you who were here last week? Uh, well, let me hear it from you. 120, oh, very good, very good. 120, roughly, who were gathered in Jerusalem, and they were in that upper room waiting and praying for something for something to happen. And there are a lot of things going on in our text for today. I mean, all kinds of stuff. The way the Holy Spirit appeared as wind and fire and the complexity of speaking in a language people can understand, right? That's a challenge for us today. The words of the prophet Joel, that the Spirit would be poured out on all people, men and women young and old, enslaved and free, all just tremendously important. But the overall theme of this passage is about how the Holy Spirit gave birth to the church and gave those first Christians the courage, the language, and the passion to tell the story of Jesus to others. Now, there are some parallels between what happened on the day 
of Pentecost and what's happening here at Bethlehem at this our time of reopening. Jesus' friends were cooped up in that upper room waiting for God's direction and then the Spirit came and sent them out. And we, all of us, are just coming out of our homes after more than a year of quarantine. And this is only our second Sunday of in-person worship. And as we come out of our confinement, we are asking Holy Spirit to come and to fill us and to direct us. And I will say that through the process of preparing to call a new pastor, and there were discussions and surveys, you identified a number of priorities. And what is clear is that just like the followers of Jesus, this is based on your own conversation and your own awareness and reporting, it is time for Bethlehem to come out, <laughs> to come out of its building and into the neighborhood. It is time for members, that's, uh, you know, that's us, that's us, you and me, that's us. It's time for us to come out as people of faith and to reveal ourselves as Christians to our friends and our co-workers and our neighbors, obviously in the appropriate ways for each of those settings. Time to come out. Pastor Barbara, a friend and a colleague of mine, shared the following story with a group of us pastors. We were gathered together. The church that she served was reaching out to their community through youth-centered activities. They did a neighborhood musical theater project, and they also had an after-school homework club for kids. Kids from the neighboring school came over and did homework, hung out, had a snack, that kind of thing. Pastor Barbara told me that, or really told all of us, that a mother and daughter who came to them through this outreach to youth had joined the congregation. The mom said that she had attended Catholic school, or sorry, Catholic church as a girl, but she had not been back to church since then. And now she was 50 years old. She had not been back to church. And when she, the mom, told her friends that she was attending church again, <laughs> her friends said, why? <laughs> why? As in, as in, why go to that judgmental, narrow-minded, homophobic, science-hating, sleep, brunch, newspaper, and bicycle-riding disrupting place called church. Mm, well, you've encountered this, you know, right? And this was her answer. My daughter started going there first, and she was coming home saying things like, God loves me. <laughs> and then I visited, and they welcomed me. I have rarely felt so welcomed by a group of people. So I started attending, and it became the place that I wanted to be. That's a good line, huh? It became the place I wanted to be. Believe me, everything Bethlehem does, all the stuff that you do, that we do, can and should be outreach from our softball team, by the way, go, go team, right? They won, I understand, this week. From, <coughs> who here plays on the team? Anybody? Jeff. Jeff, <laughs> go team, what? Over there, all right, go team, all right. <laughs> Little detour into softball, right. Everything that Bethlehem does, right? From the softball team to the care for our neighbors, including the collection we're doing for Elisha's Pantry right now, for our neighbors in Santa Rosa to the secondary school in Rwanda celebrating 15 years. Go Rwanda school. Yeah. yeah, okay, all right, yeah. All of these are avenues to come out. These are all opportunities to come out as a Christian and beyond that to form relationships and to offer a welcome. But I also want to say 
that you, Bethlehem, have some very specific ministries happening right now that are just straight up outreach. That's what they are. Through the music education and youth ministries of this congregation, you are already going out of the upper room and into the street, into the neighborhood. So for the first time ever this year, Bethlehem has sent out postcards to people in the neighborhood inviting their children to take part in VBS. Wow! Which takes place in mid-June. They were always welcome, but this year for the first time, the postcards went out <laughs> to invite them. Later this summer, there will be summer stock. Go Janet! Woo! Musical program for youth. I am assuming it's not limited to the youth of Bethlehem. Am I right? Yes. I just want to tell you how exciting it is to be with a congregation that knows that it needs to do outreach. Every congregation needs to do outreach. And that you already have avenues in place for that. You are several steps ahead in this game. But here is the thing. You know there's a little catch. I'm praising you. Now I'm going to put a challenge before you. <laughs> Someone back there knows sermons well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Most of us are not directly involved in these avenues of outreach, right? We have some leaders who are doing it, but we're, we support them with our giving and, of course, with our prayers. It's time to do a little more. This is the challenge that I want to place before you. How can you be involved? How can you be involved in some way with these programs? Whether it's by inviting the families with children in your neighborhood to take part, or maybe it's providing snacks, or maybe it's hosting an event, oops, lost my page, for the parents, or it could be things I haven't thought of, right? This is what I came up with this week. There's more. But how can you be involved so that these families, the children and the parents, have an experience of Pentecost so that they hear the good news of the love of Jesus in their own language? How do we extend a welcome that is warm? <laughs> it's so warm that, it, that they can't miss it. Such that some of them might also say, this is a place, wow, where I want to be. We all have a role in this welcoming, this coming out movement of the Holy Spirit. May Holy Spirit bring us out of all of our places of confinement. And of course, there are many. May Holy Spirit bring us out of all of our places of confinement and into the bright day of God's love for all people. Amen. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today is Pentecost, the 50th day of Easter, and we ask God to send the Holy Spirit on the church, the earth, and all who are in need, responding to each petition with the words, Come, Holy Spirit. Let's try that. For the church, we pray, Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. God of life, we pray for the church around the globe. For the church in Africa, we pray, come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the church in Asia, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the church in Australia and all the islands, we pray, come, Holy Spirit. For the church in Europe, we pray, come, Holy Spirit. For the church in North and Central and South America, we pray, come, Holy Spirit. For Bethlehem Lutheran Church, we pray, come, Spirit. And for all who search for you, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Bless the lands, the seas, and all your creatures, too numerous to count. Send your lively spirit to renew the face of the whole earth. For the earth, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Inspire the leaders of nations to strive for justice and equality for all. Bring peace to Jerusalem, to Israel, to Gaza, and to Palestine. Provide a home for refugees. For the nations of the world, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Instill in our legislators and judges a passion for truth. Grant your spirit to all who make political decisions in our land, that they discern and walk the way of righteousness. For the, for the leaders of the world, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Unite all people around the globe into one human kind of cooperation and care. Teach us respect for those whose language or skin color or culture is different from our own. This week, the anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, we lift up to you again the differences in our nation and beg you to come and to change not only our hearts but our institutions for the end of prejudice we pray come holy spirit bring an end to the pandemic restore those who have contracted the virus uphold health care workers and supply vaccines to all countries and peoples for worldwide health we pray come holy spirit Visit all who are suffering, all who feel hopeless, and all who face death. Feed all who hunger. Grant jobs to those who are unemployed. Send healing to those whom we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. For all who are in need, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. God of eternal life, we thank you for the life of your daughter, Dorothy Ronnie, and for loving her and keeping her throughout her life. We commend her now, body and spirit, into your loving arms. 
Grant her a place before your throne with all the saints in light. We ask you to comfort her nieces, Chris and Margaret, who cared for her at the end of her life, her other family members, and her friends at Bethlehem, who grieve her loss. Remind us that in you, we have the hope of eternal life. For Dorothy, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. God of second chances, we thank you for the fragile ceasefire in Gaza and pray that it holds. Beyond a ceasefire, we pray for true peace, which is justice for a homeland for the Palestinians who have been refugees since 1948 when they were expelled from their homes. We pray for comfort for the many who have lost family members, including so very many children. For Palestine and Israel, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. God of hope, we give you thanks and praise for the ministry of the Rwanda School, supported by this congregation and so many others. For 15 years of bringing education to bright young minds, for changing lives and shaping leaders for the future of Rwanda. Thank you for the vision of those who began the school and the dedication of its teachers and director in Rwanda and its board members here in the United States. For the school in Rwanda, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Receive our praise for all the faithful who have gone before us from the first Pentecost throughout Christian history and up to this week that at the end we join with all the saints to rejoice in your presence, and we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. With confidence in your love and with trust in your mercy, glorious God, giver of life, we offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace, my Zoom friends. Also with I hope it's going okay this go Sunday. Cup of <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Hi, Anne. Good to see you. Let me scroll on through. Oh, Who else do we got? Oh, Miss me. Sharon. Wonderful. The back. Oh, it's in there. Great. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Hi, everyone. The Carsons, the Needsons. Good morning. Peace be with you. You can unmute and say hi. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for putting up that. We were in yeah, a Yeah, um, is it, uh, I'll, I'll work on the dimensions, but at least she can see what's happening. Yes, yes. yes. And we, yeah. <laughs> I just Thank thought you. of that sitting Thank there. you. So. <laughs> it, it, one, one camera is okay, too, you know. Yeah, Let me invite um, you yes. to find yeah, your way back to I, your I seats, and we will had, hear I the announcements. Someone else was supposed to be at I want to say okay. that if you have an announcement to make, and that is that is great. Uh, we want to hear your announcements. Please make your way towards this microphone so that there's not a lot of time spent walking back and forth, okay? So, um, though, uh, well, maybe someone else will make these. Okay, let's go. Announcements. I'll, I'll cover it if we don't get it. <laughs> It's going to be outside, tons of fun, so please spread the word. We did send out postcards. If, you know, you happen to know someone that wants to register, there's even a handy-dandy sign out there. All you have to do is hold up your phone, and it will take you right to the registration. It's totally free, but we want to invite all of the kids and have a great time. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to make a quick announcement on behalf of the call committee. We have received um, uh, three uh, candidates. And uh, we are working with them now to schedule some Zoom interviews. And um, they're really, it's really an exciting time. And they're, they're good, strong candidates. So um, please pray for the call committee as we um, uh, venture into this next step. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn, for sharing that. I had forgotten about that announcement. <laughs> uh, um, 
If you didn't uh, pick up your communion cup on the way in, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, Mason's got the basket of them next to him, um, and we can get those passed out to anybody that needs one. Anybody up here need one? Up here, good. Also, uh, as uh, things have changed in the last year, people have moved and that, uh, our usher ranks are running a little thin. Uh, we need some more ushers. I know for sure that the uh, May, September, January team is uh, very uh, thin, uh, but some of the other months are as well. If you are interested in helping, and we do uh, one month sessions uh, three times a year, uh, uh, please contact Michelle at the office. Um, the helping uh, with our communion, helping uh, pass out the uh, bulletins at the beginning and, and that. We do need uh, that help uh, as we uh, move forward with our worship service, so thank you. Dan, will you mention setup? Oh. Okay, just a, a couple more announcements. Um, also, uh, more opportunities to volunteer. Uh, all of this setup does take a while in the morning, and so if you can come and help set up, you don't have to do it every single Sunday, but um, there is a, a sign-up sheet. Or it's on the website. Mm -hmm. Sign-up sheet on the website. Uh, we do need some help with setup in the mornings. Also, we are collecting for Elisha's pantry. I'm sure if you checked your email, you know this, but we really want to fill up their coffers. They are low on the essential supplies like shampoo and soap and those things, full size, not, not sample, but full size. Uh, there's a list in uh, the emails that you've received. And th so this week and next week, we're just trying to really push everybody bring something in and let's get a lot of um, items to them that they need. Um, I think that's, okay, going once, going twice, those are the announcements. We are not, uh, we're not passing the plate. You have passed a basket on your way in or on the way out to give your offering. And so I invite you to stand now. Let us pray together. Merciful God, God, God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Holy and gracious God, your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples and friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And now let us pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to the table. Eat and be satisfied. Thanks be to God. invite you to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
want you to, you can put your bulletins down. <laughs> Just um, center yourself in this moment because God, our loving God, wants to bless you. And so open to receiving it. Breath, open, open up to your core. God has a gift for you, and today it is the presence and the love and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so which is it that you need? Do you need that presence? Yeah. Do you need the power? Do you need the love? What is it that you need? Do you need the healing? Do you need the courage? What is it that you need from Holy Spirit? Well, breathe it in. Breathe it in. Accept it. It's there for you. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.